Today sees the start of my new Sunday series. The last series, called Through the Ages, was massively popular here on the channel, and I wanted to continue something in that vein moving forward with Battlefield 1. So, we're going to be taking a look at the weapons in the game, what they did during World War 1, the people that used them, and extend further and see what the weapons became following the war. Lots of weapons invented during this time had massive influence on the development and progression of weaponry during the 20th century, and many of them can be traced all the way through to modern day. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Battlefield 1 Weapon History. And so today we're going to start with what is currently the end of class weapon for the assault in Battlefield 1, the Hell Regal. Lots of players have managed to unlock this rather unique weapon, and many find it to currently be the best automatic weapon in the class that they can use. Its versatile statistics make it a good all-round choice for lots of different scenarios, and we'll go a bit more in depth with those now. All of this data is taken from the guys and girls over at Simthic.com. They do amazing work for the community in providing some of the more nitty gritty stats for weapons and vehicles in the game. And if you like to know all about the stuff that you stick in your loadout, then they're the place to go. As I mentioned, the Hell Regal is currently the end of class weapon for the assault, and you need to reach rank 10 within that class to unlock it. Now, unhelpfully, there are only a couple of mentions of the current progression towards the next class rank in the whole Battlefield 1 UI. Here's one inside three sub-menus of the Soldier menu, so it's really not very easy to predict how far off you are from achieving rank 10. There's a basic mention of your class ranks within the loadout screen within a multiplayer server, but again, it would be really a much nicer system to have a proper progression display like we did in Battlelog for Battlefield 4. I'm going to go a lot more in-depth with some UI changes for Battlefield 1 in another video, but right now, it's not very easy to track your progress, and it's not very easy to understand how you progress your class rank within Battlefield 1. For those of you that have unlocked the Hell Regal, however, I'm sure you're now reaping the benefits. That drum magazine loaded with 60 bullets is surely going to give you an edge in most close-quarter gunfights. Not having to reload as often with this thing is one of its main pros, and you'll likely find it fairly easy to take down multiple targets within a single drum mag. You'll want to avoid danger, though, when you do go to reload, as it is a fairly lengthy wait at 4.5 seconds. That's the price you pay for those 60-round drums. Its 650 round rate of fire is kind of middle of the road. It's been beaten out by the Automatico's 900, but it does best the MP18. And that really sets it as the automatic weapon of the class to use for close to medium range combat. And its recoil stats back that up as well, coming in at 0.28 vertical and 0.224 both left and right, making it fairly easy to control. And from my fairly extensive time with the Hell Regal, it is 100% my go-to gun in the Assault class right now, and in fact, at the moment, it's my most used gun in the entire game. But how does it stack up to its real-life counterpart? Let's find out. Probably the most interesting thing about the Hell Regal is really that it was barely ever a weapon at all in the first place. Developed by the Austro-Hungarians in 1915, the weapon never made it beyond initial prototype stage. So it's really a credit to DICE that they managed to model this thing so well for Battlefield 1. The weapon was designed to mix both the traits of pistol ammunition with machine gun power, using a water cooling system to keep everything moving. That water cooling system was a barrel wrapped and encased in a leather cover. Some of the only shots of the Hell Regal are on screen now. It's one of the few ways that we actually know the weapon ever existed, and it's one of the few ways it was ever documented. This thing is a really, really mysterious weapon. It's one of the first firearms in the world as well, 
that can really be considered a submachine gun, but the term hadn't been coined back in 1915. You can actually see one of the ports for the water cooling barrel on the right hand side of that picture there. The full name of the weapon, Standschutzer Hellriegel, is again another detail about this weapon that has never really been fully explained. The Standschutzer part may have referred to the Austro-Hungarian Reserve Force, who went by the same name at the time. The Hellriegel part, according to archives in Austria, is referenced to the surname of the weapon's designer. But again, no one knows who this truly was. Unlike prototype weapons of today, which are fully documented, back in the days of World War I, weapons were being developed all of the time, and not just by pure fancy of the creator, but out of necessity. The war started on horseback with rifles, and it ended with tanks and machine guns, so it was a true shift in technology at that time. The Hellriegel was thought to have chambered the 9mm Stay Around, standard issue Austro-Hungarian ammunition, and it could be fed by either box magazines or a drum. This image here shows there were two box magazines tested at the time, both with around 20 rounds apiece, and the drum could hold around 160 rounds. So much, much more than the drum in Battlefield 1. Could you imagine a 160 round SMG and trying to balance that? It would just be an absolute nightmare. Just to give you some more info, the drum appears to have a coil spring attached to a knee joint follower arm to feed the weapon the rounds, but it's not clear how the drum was actually attached to the weapon. The image here shows the soldier laying prone, so it's entirely possible the drum hadn't yet been adapted to attach onto the weapon's body. It's sitting in a small cradle on the table there. The flexible chute here was the only point at which the drum was connected to the weapon's body, and likely being very flimsy, it probably wouldn't hold the weight of a 160 round load. Now while the Hellriegel was never seen beyond this state here, a prototype, and there's no record of it ever being used during combat, its existence back then, and recognised today, was one of the first attempts to really create something akin to what we know as a submachine gun. As I mentioned, the term submachine gun hadn't been coined at the time of the war, and in 1915, seeing the Austro-Hungarian Empire working on this was a true sign that empires around that time were working on new ways to arm their soldiers. The VR Perosa, another weapon featured in Battlefield 1, one of the two weapons the Sentry Elite class has as a primary, was also developed around the time of the war, and it was later adapted from an anti-air gun into the shoulder-fired automatic weapon that we know as the Automatico. By the time the war was ending in 1918, the introduction of the MP-18 by the German Empire was really the first time a submachine gun had actually become practical enough to be used in combat. German stormtroopers were given the MP-18 as their standard issue weapon. Work on submachine guns began just before and during World War I and had a massive influence on the weaponry we see today. Imagine if that work hadn't begun at that time. Would the war have ended the way it did? What if the Austro-Hungarians had succeeded in their attempts to combine light pistol ammunition with the power of automatic fire with the Hellriegel? It likely would have changed the war in a very, very big way. As for the weapon in Battlefield 1, it's surprising to see DICE add it in at all, considering it had no use during World War 1 and there are barely any references to its existence anyway, I would have thought we'd have seen something else in its place. Really interesting fact here, of the three images that exist of this weapon, they only ever show the right hand side of it, no left hand side can be seen. So DICE modelled the Hellriegel's right hand side as shown here, but the left hand side is completely made up, as no one alive knows what it looked like. How crazy is that? So there you go, the Hellriegel in Battlefield 1. Well, it's probably nothing like its real life counterpart. We'll never know for sure, as there aren't any units of it in existence, but it's safe to say it did pave the way for other weapons to operate in a similar fashion, and right now it's likely the best SMG that you can pick in the Assault class 
for all-round performance. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the Hell Regal down below in the comments, and let me know as well what weapon you want featured on the next episode of Battlefield 1 Weapon History. Just like through the ages, you guys get to choose what comes next. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.